Hello and welcome to your virtual cocktail experience. My name's Johnny, I'm going to be hosting it for you. Before we start making any drinks, I would like to talk you through what goes with what. So you can see the ingredients down here. Uh, your orange mixer bottle, looks like that, goes with your pink miniature spirit bottle and your passion fruit. Them three ingredients make the Porn Star Martini. We're going to make that drink third. The second drink we're going to make is the Espresso Martini, as you'd probably imagine. That's your two black bottles and your coffee beans. And then the remaining ingredients make a mojito. That's your clear spirit bottle, your soda water, your sugar sachets, your lime and your fresh mint leaves. And the equipment we're using today, so you should have received a cocktail shaker, a martini glass, highball glass, bar spoon and a muddler. The other things we need you to supply is a knife and a chopping board and some ice. Once you've got them all together, we're good to go. So the first cocktail we're gonna to make today is the mojito. Here's how you make it. You'll need your knife and chopping board, your bar spoon and your muddler, and then the ingredients I mentioned before. That's the clear spirit bottle, soda water, sugar sachets, lime and mint leaves. So grab your knife and chopping board and grab your lime. The first thing you're gonna do is chop the lime up. So you take the ends off, like so. Stand it up on one end. And then you're going to chop it into eight segments. So you chop down, turn it 90 degrees, and chop again. Give you four quarters, and then half them quarters, giving you eight segments. The reason why bartenders like to chop into eight segments like this, well, it works well for a mojito, and also if you've got Coronas in the fridge, it fits in the top of your Mexican lager. Now, how much lime you put in a mojito can depend on a few things. It can depend on the size of the lime, it can depend on the size of the glass, it can also depend on how juicy the lime is. So it's somewhere between three and five wedges. If you go for four, you won't be far wrong. I do like mine quite limey, so I'm going to go with five wedges. Okay, now you're going to muddle it. You'll listen bartenders doing this in the bars. It's the process of pushing all the juice out of the lime. So grab your muddler, put it in the glass, put your hand over the top, get your elbow up in the air, and do it on a nice firm surface so you can create the pressure. If you've got a cloth or a napkin, bit of kitchen roll, put that over the glass and put your hand over because you don't want all the lime spraying up in your face. And then push down, as you push down, you just give it a little turn, like so. And you do this for about 10-15 seconds or until you're confident that you've got all the juice out of the lime. There you go. Now, to make good cocktails, it's a lot about balance. And it's often the balance between sweet and sour. You'll notice lemons and limes are in so many cocktails because they give a really nice natural sourness. But you need to balance that with some sweetness. So in your box, you will have received three sugar sachets. I know from experience, I'll need all three in mine for it to taste how I like it. If you want to start with two, you will have an opportunity to add a third later if it needs it. We're going to try the cocktail before we finish it. But I'm going to go straight in with three sachets. But again, two or three, I'll leave it up to you. Okay, next we're going to put in the rum. So in that bottle you've got 50 millilitres of white rum. We've used Bacardi. Um, you can use golden rum when you're making mojitos. If you went to South America, they probably would give you a golden rum. But in this country, I tend to favour a white rum by about 60-40. So we go with the majority. Next, you're going to get your mint leaves. And what you need to do, you need to get yourself a nice sprig. So when I say a sprig, it's a piece off the end with four or five leaves on, like so. You're going to put that to one side. You need that at the end for the garnish. And then you need to get seven or eight mint leaves in the palm of your hand. And you just give it a smack once, nice and hard. Just like that. And then it's ready to go in the glass. By smacking it, you're just waking the mint up, releasing some of that aroma you need in the mojito. Now you're going to ice it up. So get some ice in there. We're going to give it a really good churn, okay? Uh, we're not stirring it, we're going to churn it in every direction. We need to get all that sugar dissolved that we've used. And I always find this works better to a bit of music. So, Alexa, play Little Richard. Alexa, 
Alexa, stop. Okay, so there's a few things happen there. Obviously, you've dissolved the sugar, you've mixed everything together, you've chilled it down, and you've given the drink a little bit of dilution it needs from the ice. Now we need to do the taste test, okay? So you're gonna to learn to taste like the bartenders. Here's what you do. Grab one of your straws, and you put the straw in the bottom of the glass. I'm gonna warn you, it's gonna taste a little bit intense because you've not got the soda water in there yet, but you're just looking for a little taste for that balance that I talked about between sweet and sour. So you put the straw to the bottom, put your finger over the top of the straw, and when you pull that out, that holds some liquid in there, and you put it in your mouth, let go with your finger, just give you a little taste. Perfect, just right for me that. If you think it tastes too sour for you, add some more sugar. If you think it tastes too sweet, squeeze some more lime in. That's just right for me that, so I'm good to go. So more ice in there. I can't stress the importance of ice enough. When you're making a long and cool cocktail like this, really important you go with loads of ice. You want more ice than liquid. A common misconception that putting a lot of ice in a cocktail waters it down. It's actually the opposite. Not putting enough ice in a cocktail waters it down because the warm liquids melt the ice quicker. So you've got a battle of physics going on between the liquids and the ice. You want the ice to win. Then you're going to finish with some soda water. So top the glass up like so. And then put a fresh straw in the glass. And the sprig of mint that you saved, just give it a little tap on your hand, which just wakes it up. Give it a little rub around the rim of the glass. And carefully place that at the base of the straw. Okay? And there is one rule at our virtual cocktail experience that you all must abide by. All drinks must be served with a smile. So the second cocktail we're going to make today is the espresso martini. Uh, a little bit of background on the drink. The drink was invented in the early 80s by a bartender called Dick Brazel. There is Dick himself, can, the power of technology, we can bring him into your room. Um, so the story behind the drink, what, drink was, Dick Brazel was working in a bar in the West End of London. And one night, a supermodel walked into his bar. She, she was jet lagged, wanted to get the party started. She said, I want you to make me a drink that's going to wake me up and me up. So Dick put a vodka with an espresso, and there was born the espresso martini. So here's how you make it. Um, you're going to be serving the drink straight up, so without ice, but you do want it to be really cold. So while you make the cocktail, you can put some ice in your glass to chill it down. Grab your cocktail shaker, and the first bottle you're going to put in is the miniature spirit bottle. So just so you know, in there you have got 25 millilitres of vodka. We've used Absolute and 25 millilitres of Kahlua, which looks like that. So that goes in first. Now it won't matter which order you put the bottle in, because you are going to shake it up. But when bartenders make cocktails, they always start with the base spirit and work up from there. So I'd like you to do the same. Then in your mixer bottle, you've got 80 millilitres of double espresso and about 15 millilitres of sugar syrup. Just give that a little shake before you put it in. And now you're going to ice it up, seal it up, shake it up. So, ice it up, seal it up, and shake it up. When you're shaking, it's really important that you use both hands, one hand on the bottom, one hand on the top, get a finger over the top, and you want long, aggressive shakes, okay? About 10 to 15 seconds should do it. And then you're going to strain it out into your martini glass. Remember to remove the ice. And strain in to the glass. And the industry standard garnish for an espresso martini is three carefully placed coffee beans. Like so. And remember, all cocktails served with a smile.
The third cocktail we're going to make today is the Porn Star Martini, the one you've all been waiting for. This is the best selling cocktail in this country. It's also very popular around the world. So why is the drink so popular? Well, the combination of vanilla and passion fruit really works. The bartender who invented it was a man called Douglas Ankara. His inspiration for the drink was a cake that he'd eaten a couple of days before that had vanilla and passion fruit and he thought it really worked. Uh, the name's obviously catchy. Over the years, cocktails have been synonymous with sexual innuendos. You've had the screaming orgasm, the sex on the beach, or well, the porn star martini fits well into that. Where does the name come from? Well, the rumours in the Barton industry is that the man who invented it, Douglas Ankara, is a big fan of pornography. He has vehemently denied it, but I always say he never let the truth get away of a good story. You'll have also seen the drink served with a shot of champagne or a shot of Prosecco. So the guest kind of feels like they're getting two drinks for the price of one. You put all that together, you have got a winning cocktail. So how do you make it? In method, it's very similar to the espresso martini, but your difference is your passion fruit. So you're going to chop your passion fruit in half. Chop it in half that way, okay? Giving you two round halves. You're going to put one half to one side for your garnish. And the other half, you're going to scoop the flesh into your cocktail tin. Like so. Then in your pink miniature bottle, in there you have got 15 millilitres of Pessoa and 35 millilitres of vanilla infused vodka. We've used Absolute. So that goes in now. Then in your orange mixer bottle, in there you have got 15 millilitres of fresh passion fruit puree and about 80 millilitres of Rubicon passion fruit juice. And then just like the espresso martini, ice it up, seal it up, and if you're feeling confident, throw it behind your back. Really good shake. And then strain it into your martini glass. If you shook it well enough, you should have a nice creamy head on the top like that. And then carefully place your half passion fruit on the top and serve with a smile. Yeah. Cheers, everyone.